Today we're going to look at a nice sum involving two functions that are very important in a subject called analytic number theory. But maybe let's step back a little bit and look at the question, what is analytic number theory? Well, I think you can generally decompose the study of number theory into three branches. There's so-called elementary number theory, which would be like a first course in number theory, where you learn something like Fermat's Little Theorem and the study of congruence as mod n and so on and so forth. That would be the kind of stuff that you would also see in math contests. And then there's something called algebraic number theory. And that's using the methods of abstract algebra to, well, study number theory. And there you're looking at like class field theory, and then you're looking at rings of integers over maybe field extensions of the rationals and so on and so forth. And then finally, you've got analytic number theory, which is using the methods of analysis to maybe explore number theoretic ideas. Okay, so anyway, what do we have here? Our goal is to find the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of zeta evaluated at 2n minus beta evaluated at 2n. But what are those functions? Well, zeta is the Riemann zeta function, so likely you know that one already. So it's defined by zeta of s is equal to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the s. And in fact, that's not really the definition. The zeta function is the so-called analytic continuation of this sum. That being said, the values that we're plugging into the zeta function will match the values of the zeta function and the values of the sum. Okay, and then we've got this other function called the Dirichlet beta function, and it's defined as beta of s equals the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n minus 1 over 2n minus 1 to the s. And again, that's the sum representation, which works for these values plugged in, but technically it's defined as the analytic continuation. Okay, so anyway, let's get to it. So I'm going to write this as the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, and then I'll take each of these and represent them as their sums. So here I've got the sum as m goes from one to infinity of, let's see, we have one over m to the power two n. So, well, that's what we've got here because we're evaluating zeta at two n. That means we're getting two n into the exponent and then m is our index sum. Okay, and then what about for our beta thing? So we've got the sum as m goes from one to infinity here, minus one to the m minus one over, we have two m minus one raised to the two n power. And now before we move on to the next step, I'd like to make the following observation about what's happening when m is equal to one in each of these sums. In other words, the first term of each sum. So let's see, if we plug m equals one in here, we get one over one to the two n. So we have one over one to the two n minus negative one to the one minus one over, let's see, two minus one raised to the two n. But notice that that collapses to one minus one, which is pretty clearly equal to zero. So now I'll use that fact to take this one and this one and change them both to twos. That's because, well, the first terms cancel out as we just saw. So next up what I'll do is I'll change the order of summation. So everything converges absolutely here. So I'm totally allowed to change the order of summation. And then, well, we'll see what happens after that. So now I'll have the sum as m goes from two to infinity. And then inside of that, I've got the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over m all raised to the two n. So I've written that in that form because we're gonna notice that this is a certain type of series. And then since my m sum is on the outside, I can bring this minus one to the m minus one out of 
well, this inner second in sum. And I'll take one of these minus signs and cancel it with this, leaving this, me with plus minus one to the m. And then I'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of, now it's gonna be one over two m minus one raised to the two n. Okay, so now that's where we are at the moment. But now we'll note that each of those inner sums are geometric series. And that's because if we kind of forget that we've got our exterior sum, then, well, we've got one over m as our common ratio. Or here, one over two m minus one is our common ratio. But for all of the appropriate values of m here, Notice that common ratio is in fact less than one, meaning that we get convergence. So let's recall that over here. So here we've got the sum as n goes from one to infinity of r to the n turns into r over one minus r. And this is when the absolute value of r is less than one. So that's the standard geometric series summation rule. Okay, well, we almost have something of that form. I can tweak it to make it of that form by erasing this two in, bringing this squared inside, and then we have an n right there. Then I can do the same thing right here. So I'll erase that two and bring this squared inside. So now my first one is a geometric series with common ratio one over m squared, and my second one is a geometric series with common ratio one over two m minus one squared. Okay, so now let's see what we have at this stage. So we'll have the sum as m goes from two to infinity, and then this first sum will be one over m squared over one minus one over m squared. Recall it's starting term over one minus common ratio as we exhibited over there. And then we'll have plus minus one to the m, and then we'll have one over two m minus one squared over one minus two m minus one squared. So something that looks like that. So now what I'd like to do is maybe clear the denominators in both the numerator and the denominator of both of these terms. So I'll do it here by multiplying by m squared over m squared and I'll do it here by multiplying by 2m minus one squared over 2m minus one squared. So something like that. So now I've got the sum as m goes from two to infinity, and this first term now looks like one over m squared minus one, and then we have plus minus one to the m, and then one over 2m minus one squared minus one. So we've got something like that. Okay, so now let's bring that up and then keep going. Okay, so this is where we've landed so far. And now I'd like to notice that each of those fractions that's making up our sum is a difference of squares. Well, a difference of squares in the denominator. We have one over m squared minus one and then one over, well, 2m minus one squared minus one. And so now we're gonna use maybe a standard trick of partial fraction decomposition. So, and this is built off of the fact that of course x squared minus one factors as x minus one times x plus one. So that means we can take one over x squared minus one and rewrite it as one half times the quantity one over x minus one minus one over x plus one. So you can see that either by doing a straightforward partial fraction decomposition calculation or by putting this right hand side back together and seeing that you get that left hand side. Okay, so now let's apply that to both of these sums. Where of course in this first sum, the role of m is being played by x or the role of x is being played by m. But in this second sum, the role of x is being played with 2m minus one, so we've got to keep that in mind. So that's going to leave us with a half, which I can bring out front, and then I have the sum as m goes from two to infinity, and then this first one will be one over m minus one minus one over m plus one, and then I have plus minus one to the m, 
And then for the second one, I've got one over, well, 2m minus one minus one. So that's going to be 2m minus two. And then I'll have to, from that, subtract, well, what will it be? It'll be 2m minus one plus one in the denominator from this rule right here. So that'll be one over 2m. Okay. So that's where we are at the moment. And now I'd like to use the fact that if I view each of these, so this orange underline and these other two orange underlines as independent series, then they would all converge. So under that view, that means that we should be able to split them into, well, three series. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So here we'll have one half. And then let's take this first one and write it as a limit of a partial sum. So this will be the limit as, I'm gonna write this as capital M goes to infinity because my index is M. And then I'll have the sum as M goes from two to capital M of one over M minus one minus that sum as M goes from two up to capital M of one over M plus one. Great. And the only way I was able to split those two parts into two series was via this limit of partial sums. I couldn't do that without breaking these down into a limit of finite sums because we don't have convergence for each of those individually. Okay, but we do have convergence for those individually, so I can break that up. So I'll have plus one half. Actually, I'm going to write that as one quarter. And I can do that by factoring a two out of the denominator there. And then I've got this sum as m goes from two up to infinity of minus one to the m over m minus one. So something like that. And then let's see, I've got minus another quarter from bringing the two out front. And then the sum as m goes from two to infinity of minus one to the m over m. Okay, good. But now I'm gonna do some tricks to aid us in simplification. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is re-index this first sum. And I'll re-index that by replacing all of the m's with m plus two. And then next up, I'm gonna look way over here at this last sum and then add a first term to it. But let's notice that by adding a first term, we're actually uh, adding a copy of one quarter. And that's because we've got a minus sign here. And then if we have m equals one, we've got another minus sign there. So in the end, if we change this from a two to a one, then we've added a quarter. So in order to counteract that, we'll subtract a quarter. Okay, good. And then one last thing that I'll do is I'll re-index this sum. And I'll do that by replacing all of the m's with m plus one here. Okay, so now let's see where we're at. So we've got this is one half and then the limit as capital M goes to infinity. And now we've got the sum as m goes from zero to m minus two of one over m plus one. So that's what we get from this sum, replacing all of the m's with m plus two. So obviously m plus two minus one is m plus one. When m plus two is two, m is zero. When m plus two is capital M, m is m minus two. Okay, and then we're gonna subtract the sum as m goes from two up to capital M of one over m plus one. Okay, and then we've got plus one quarter, this sum as m goes from one to infinity of minus one to the m plus one over m. And then after adding in this first term and taking out a copy of minus one, we've got another plus one quarter, the sum as m goes from one up to infinity of minus one to the m plus one over m. And then we've got this minus a quarter here. So now where can we go from this stage? Well, let's maybe look into this very first sum. And notice we've got the zeroth term and the first term, which are different from this second sum. 
the zeroth term is one, the first term is a half, and then after that, we've got the sum as lowercase m goes from two to capital M minus two. And then for this second sum, we've got something similar happening. We've got the sum as lowercase m goes from two to capital M minus two. And then we've got minus the top two terms. So those top two terms are one over capital M minus one minus one over capital M minus two. But then notice that this term right here will cancel this term right here because, well, they have the same exact sum and they're just attached to different signs. And then applying the limit, we'll have these two terms go off to zero because we've got a capital M in the denominator and we're letting M go to infinity. That means we can write all of this as, well, let's see, we've got one plus a half which is one and a half or three over two times a half, which is three quarters, but we'll subtract a quarter here. So three quarters minus a quarter is a half. And then after that, we've got a quarter plus a quarter times the same sum, but that's a well-known sum for the natural log of two. So a quarter natural log of two plus a quarter natural log of two is a half natural log of two. And just to reiterate, that comes from these two sums right here. But then we have it, we've got a final value for our goal sum up here. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.